Hej alla ni som följer. Tesla, welcome to today's press conference. Minister for Civil Defense, Carlos Calderon, will take part. Minister for National Development, Cooperation and Foreign Trade, Johan Fischel, and Director General for the Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency, Charlotte Peter Gornitska. A PowerPoint presentation will be shown during the press conference. After the press conference, the PowerPoint presentation and the press conference will be available at the website of the Swedish government, regeringen.se. Hey, Hello. Welcome to today's press conference. Regarding the earthquake in Turkey and northern Syria, the situation is that an earthquake of magnitude 7.8 took place in south of Turkey at 0147 local time today. The main shock affected neighboring provinces, and during the day there has been reported a number of aftershocks in uh, Gaziantep province. They had two aftershocks with a magnitude of 6.4 and 6.5, respectively, on the Richter scale. At 13.24 local time, a new major shock took place in the same province where the first shock took place, and this was 7.6 on the Richter scale. So these are serious shocks. In total, at least 2,824 2, buildings have collapsed so far. There's a large degree of uncertainty, including a hospital in the Hatay province. The airport in Hatay is completely closed down. The uh, airports in Hatay and Gazantab have been closed for civil aviation. The Turkish defense force has created an air cor corridor to the affected area, a natural guise. The pipeline has exploded, which affects the supply of natural gas. The electric lines and phone lines are not working in several uh, cities. The energy supply is seriously affected. There's also snowstorm, which affects rescue efforts, and including the and also the frequent aftershocks. The last numbers we've seen that more than 2,000 people so far have been confirmed. Said and Turkey, at least 7,300 injured have been reported. And considering the magnitude of the earthquake and the extensive damage, this uh, toll will increase during the evening and during the night. Turkey has also declared the highest level of uh, uh, requested international assistance. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs currently have us no information about injured or deceased Swedes. It's uh, difficult to confirm information, specifically information connected to Syria. There is an issue in Syria. A number of houses have been damaged and have collapsed, according to the Turkish information with the Turkish press, 427 people has told, have died so far, and the latest numbers from the Syrian Ministry of Health is 237 dead and 545 injured. Right now, about 400 people are registered on the list of Swedish citizens in Turkey, very few of them in the affected areas, however, the Consulate General in Istanbul knows that a lot of Swedes with double citizenship are in the area, so the figures are probably high. It's probably more than 100. The number of Swedes in Syria is considered to be quite limited. About 10 people are registered on the so-called Swedish list, but the numbers are probably slightly high. And uh, the MFA has earlier asked the Swedish citizens to leave Syria and not to travel to Syria. The MFA and the corresponding authorities are now working with the situation, collecting information about the number of people in the countries, the number of people with Swedish citizens in the uh, country, but also what 
is the magnitude of the needs and how Sweden can assist. We're doing this in cooperation with the EU. The Swedes in place are asked to follow the information from the local authorities to get in touch with their relatives and to report to the Swedish list. If there is a requirement for consular support, they should contact the nearest embassy or consul by email, by phone, or call the emergency number in Stockholm, number is 08-405-5000. So 08-405-5000. Thank you. At the present stage, people are fighting for their lives and uh, the collapsed buildings uh, due to the earthquake which took place this night and the world is fighting to collect help and to assist Turkey and Syria. Sweden will be part of this assistance. The work was with this was started already this night and I soon pass the floor to Charlotte Peter Genitska, the GT at the Swedish Civil Continuous Agency, but I'm proud to say that about 10 hours after the earthquake, MSB, the Swedish Civil Continuous Agency, has uh, offered disaster relief to Turkey and Syria. And having said that, I pass the floor to Director General of the Swedish Civil Continuous Agency for, for an update. Thank you. And uh, this has been an intense day, and it's very important when we offer our assistance is that we respond to the needs which are a place, a something we don't want to see that everyone is doing the same thing, and there are gaps in uh, place. So what we have done today, we have uh, received the request. The EU is coordinating, but it's based on the needs expressed by Turkey, and we are looking at our possibilities to provide assistance in a number of areas. We are coordinating our efforts together with the EU and with the Nordic countries with the purpose to ensure that we supplement each other and we contribute to coordinated assistance from our part. It's also extremely important for us to follow up the situation in Syria. As the minister said, it's difficult to work there, so there's a lot of focus on information to work through Turkey. We have several measures in place, but maybe there's something which the minister would like to say something about. Yes. When it comes to the assistance which uh, Sweden can provide in short term, it's about assistance to the affected population, tents, uh, temporary emergency lodging, temporary offices, and accommodation for relief workers, and maybe most important from the Swedish part at an early stage, possibilities to contribute with the uh, coordination and control centers to coordinate the relief work. And we have a possibility to send emergency team on a very short term. So the question is what kind of uh, request will be received from the civil contingencies mechanism of the EU where this work is cooperated, where they've had held a meeting today. And MSB, Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency, is about two o'clock today made an offer saying that they can assist with these different resources. It's also important to note that this is a humanitarian disaster. The consequence of this will be noticeable for a very long term. It's not about being first on the scene, but it's about being resilient with the provided assistance, and Sweden is good at that, and Sweden will be able to contribute. It's uh, about expert knowledge in energy, logistics, construction, water waste management, and Sweden will provide the required assistance, the assistance which, can, which we can contribute with. Sweden today, being uh, the present country of the EU, summoned a meeting with a council called IPCR, 
this is the crisis management mechanism and being the present country, Sweden has the possibility to summon the meeting. We have done that in order to coordinate the assistance on the political level. And here I would like to pass the floor to the Minister for International Development, Cooperation and Foreign Trade. Thank you. The situation is as follows. What's happening right now is that the Red Cross and the UN are assessing the needs on the ground. There are no doubts that the situation is very urgent, the needs are great. Therefore, the government today decided to allocate 7 million kroner to humanitarian support to IFRC. And this is for the Turkish Red Crescent and the Syrian Red Crescent. These are two national Red Crescent uh, associations which uh, have strong uh, networks of volunteers, and uh, which means that they, in this urgent situation, can provide for the uh, affected areas with beds, uh, food, communication, tents, everything which is needed at this very urgent stage. And this is the work we would like to support. Therefore, during this urgent phase, five million to the Turkish Red Crescent and two million to the Syrian Red Crescent. Additionally, there is a significant support which Sweden already provides through to the to, to Sweden's core support to you and to OCHA and also the Red Cross through IFRC. So there are several assistance packages which coincide here. The core support is decisive in order for the organizations to be f as flexible as possible when such disasters take place so that they can quickly respond to new crises. We will follow this development very closely. We are in close contact with the authorities in the country to find out what kind of assistance is required, how we could uh, contribute in the best possible manner. And we're prepared that during the coming day, when we get a new understanding of the needs, we can make new decisions on new assistance. But here at the initial stage, we immediately allocate 7 million krona to humanitarian uh, aid for the consequence of the earthquake in Turkey and Syria. That's what we wanted to say at this stage. We're prepared to answer any questions if there are any. Let's start with the SVT, Swedish television. Let me ask you, let me ask you whether the government has had any direct contacts with President Erdogan, among others. We've uh, been communicating with the authorities in the country wh who and how we can inform you about this later, but we have been in contact with them today. Right, and the meeting, the crisis mechanism which you have summoned, when the, will this meeting take place? Uh, 6 p.m. tonight. Thank you. How, how quickly was the meeting summoned after the earthquake uh, happened? This work initi was initiated by the MSB and the government office late uh, at night, this last night, and this has been uh, ongoing since then. And uh, how much was the agreement to send the assistance? Sorry, could you clarify the, uh, was, did anyone feel that more assistance should be sent or less assistance? Well, obviously there's a big, unity in the entire government and the Swedish agencies that Sweden supports uh, others during the times of humanitarian crisis and catastrophes, oh, disasters, sorry. We have done this before and we'll do it now to support Turkey and Syria, to before. Let me ask you about the assistance, 7 million krona. What is it based upon more specifically? Sweden provides assistance which consists of different parts linked to the, mainly to the core support. And this is what the organization always so, uh, often require because this provides them with a lot of flexibility. Right now, we allocate 35 million to this organization as core support. 
20% of this are, could be earmarked for different sections. And these are the 20% which we've said today should be channeled to Turkey and Syria. And we can do that without having a formal government meeting. We could have done this anyway, but we can do it more or less with immediate effect. While we're standing here, there is a discussion with the different agencies about what should be added on top of that, because this is on the, the start, considering the large humanitarian needs in place. So we believe that when we understand the needs in the field, we'll be making new decisions, but this is money to support with blankets, uh, medications, uh, food, uh, pull people out of the class buildings. Thank you. Unless there are any uh, more questions, uh, we conclude the press conference.